Help him pull. Duh. Whoa! It's free. What is that? Oh, whatever it was, we got clothing or something. Really? Yeah. Here, 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 here. Take a picture of it. So are you thinking you'll put it on Facebook or Instagram or something? Yeah, it'll be on Facebook and uh, maybe one of the missing and murdered that are out there. Their family member will recognize a piece of clothing. Maybe. Maybe not. It's worth a try, though. When you feel something like that, you're really curious. You yeah. want to know what it is. I think it's somebody. I think it's somebody, but it's hard to prove, though, right? To just ask what I think. I think it's somebody. I'm here in Winnipeg to meet with the volunteer team, Drag the Red. They've been dredging the Red River in Winnipeg for two seasons, searching for missing and murdered Indigenous women, and I'm here to see what they find. 1,181 Indigenous women have been murdered or gone missing under suspicious circumstances across Canada since 1980, a homicide rate 4.5 times higher than for non-Aboriginal women. A report by the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights noted that murders of Aboriginal women are not investigated with the same urgency as for other Canadians. Despite protests and recommendations, the government has so far refused to launch an inquiry. Aboriginal women make up 4.3% of Canadian women, but represent 16% of all female homicides. Manitoba has the greatest concentration of Aboriginal people in the country at 13.6%. First Nations women account for 49% of female homicides in the province. The body of a 15-year-old First Nations girl named Tina Fontaine was pulled from the Red River in Manitoba's capital, Winnipeg, wrapped in plastic in 2014. Fontaine had been missing for 10 days and was sexually exploited before her death. Police found her body by accident. They were looking for a man who was seen struggling in the river. A group of friends formed Drag the Red to look for more bodies after Fontaine was found. Hey! Are you Kyle? Yes. Hey, I'm Hillary. Nice to meet you, Hillary. It's really nice to meet you, too. Uh, what are you up to right now? We're just with an elder. He's had a vision about uh, Bradley Bush's son oh. in the river a few years ago. Oh, wow. So like, he's just trying. We just went along the river to see if we could uh, capture his vision. The police won't search this, so it's the perfect way to get rid of anything if the police won't search it. Do you kind of wish that they would give you more help? I wish they would actually do it themselves. You know, like, there's lots of evidence in there, and that's a fact. One of my boat drivers. Okay. It's Calvin Alexander. Hey, it's been great since the beginning. Hey, cool. I'm Hillary. Hillary, right now. Yeah. They were trolling the banks. Yeah, we're just looking for signs. Like this along vision. the sides. He's the elder. That's yeah, along the sides. And uh, Bradley lost his son. Yeah. So, uh, so they're looking for his son, and that's yeah. an elder. So yeah. tomorrow, you guys are gonna come off to the drag then? Not yeah, you'll see tomorrow. Yeah, but, uh, for sure. It's not easy, man. Drag the Red started as a dozen friends with a borrowed boat. The group's Facebook page now has more than 3,000 members, and 60 regular volunteers search the river every day after work and on weekends. Though they focus on missing and murdered Indigenous women, Drag the Red also helps community members look for family who may have committed suicide by drowning themselves in the river. A forensic anthropologist heard about what they are doing, and she and her team are teaching volunteers how to search the riverbanks more effectively. We are going to give you a demonstration of how we search and how we search with different kinds of tools. I'm an assistant professor at Brandon University and I'm also a trained forensic anthropologist. Hi, I'm Dori Rainey. I'm working on my PhD in uh, physical anthropology. Um, I'm not a forensic or physical anthropologist. I'm an archaeologist. Um, some of the search that we do is a little bit similar to what, uh, what these guys do, so I'm, uh, I'm here to help today and uh, glad to be here, so thank you. If it looks like bone, that's when you can take a picture, send it to me, and I can tell you pretty quickly if it's uh, animal or human. If you do come across human remains 
and they are partially decomposed now that ground cover that you've been touching is now biohazardous, right? Um, I saw you yesterday in the boat um, and you were out looking for your son, right? Yeah. We've been searching, uh, dragging on. I was gonna find him and I'm gonna try and bring him home. Try and find him. Bernadette, you started Drag the Red. Can you tell me why you started? Uh, well, there was a 15-year-old girl pulled out of the river, discarded in a garbage bag like she was garbage. And uh, we were really hoping that the police would have um, dragged the red. So we had put it on social media. I had put it on social media that you know, the red needs to be dragged. It was a record last year, like seven bodies were pulled out of this river. So four while we were dragging and two months and the other three while we weren't dragging. Drag the Red has not found any human remains, but think they may be loosening debris and causing bodies to float to the surface later. There were times where the draggers were dragging and they fully felt like they had um, snagged on a body but couldn't pull it up and you know, the next day a body was recovered, so. Why did police say that they're not going to help you search? Well, they say they need evidence to search. Some of the things we've brought in are remains. We didn't know if they were human or not. Uh, many articles of clothing that had blood stains on them. Um, we've pulled stuff up from the river that were held down by cinder blocks. These guys this year uh, pulled out a shotgun. So we make sure we document it and then we hand it over to the police. Um, they have boats, we don't have that many boats. We weren't asking them to come out and die, but we were asking as if they would come out and accompany us um, dragging. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't want to put anybody's life at risk, definitely not. We know that our water is murky, muddy, zero visibility. I'm at St. John's Park where everyone's gone to take cover after learning how to search for bones. There's been a tornado warning, so that's why we're taking cover. We're going to go join everyone for the feast. started Drag the Red with Bernadette, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, why did you want to do that? Well, it's like, I have a sister missing, and there's lots of missing people out there. And Tina Fontaine was just a teenager, and they pulled her out of there. And I've always wondered if there's any more. It's an easy process with just dragging the bottom. But you get those big snags, you get a lot of things running through your mind. Like what? Like, uh, maybe it's somebody. Maybe we're setting them free. Who knows? Maybe this is some answer from my sister. How long has she been missing now? It'll be five years. Five years. Five years, yeah. I don't want to turn my back on her, or, you know what I mean? I'm not going to stop doing what I'm doing, because you just don't do that to family. And if, say, somebody did take her and somebody really did do something bad to her, they got to see her face every time they watch the fucking news. You know what I mean? Sorry for swearing. <laughs> sorry for swearing. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, but yeah. Like, they got to see her and every other person if there is any, like, say there is somebody, like a serial killer or somebody. That's just somebody, right? They have, to, they have to live with what they did and they got to see them every time the news goes on or we have any of these functions. And I hope that it eats them up. That's all good. Gotta get the word out there, right? Why do you offer tobacco? A prayer. It's a prayer. It's a prayer. Sure uh, say a the prayer. great grandmothers, grandfathers, they uh, protect us because it takes a life here all the time. Eh? 
So what are you guys hoping to do today? What's the plan? Just drag and just do our best to try to find some evidence. If we can, we can. If we can't, then we'll just come another day. Is there a particular spot we're heading to? There's that Alexander Docks. We started off here because of Tina Fontaine, and we've been pulling up stuff ever since. If I wasn't pulling up stuff, then I would move to the next section. I hear that a lot of people end up in the river from suicide. So do people jump off the bridges? That's such truth. Uh, my mom's one of those statistics. Really? Yeah. She jumped off the Redwood Bridge. My sister, too, also, she walked into the water. Mm -hmm. Walked into the river with her own life. Mm -hmm. And ever since she went in, that's the day I started searching the red. When was that? Last, last, that was last fall, eh? Yeah, last fall. Last fall. Yeah. That's how I met Daryl. He was looking for his sister. He showed up at opening ceremony and been on board ever since. Okay, so we gotta be careful and make sure the rope doesn't wrap around the camera, like your foot. It, it does happen. Just gotta be careful, that's all because this river is unforgiving and it will, if you give it a chance, it will pull you under. And then I just let it go down. And you'll know when it hits the bottom, when it stops moving, bottom, right? So then you go one, two, three, four, and then you just wait. So all we're doing is drifting with the current right now, right? Well, yeah. Wow. Wow. It's still dragging, right? Can you feel it? Yeah, yeah, I can feel it dragging. We got a snag, guys. Oh, that's a big one. That's a big one. We got a bike. We got a bike. A whole bike. You guys seem to be in really good spirits, but you're doing something so dark. Why is that? Well, who's going to do it? How much people do you see out there on this river? There's this boat and that boat. Do you find it a problem that civilians are doing what could be considered police work? No, I don't, because we wouldn't be doing it in the first place. If they feel comfort and solace in doing it uh, to bring closure to themselves and, and anybody else, then all the power to them, and, and we support that as a police service. You support it morally, but not with resources. Correct. It's just not a, a, a good allocation of our resources. Um, basically, it's like looking for a, a needle in the haystack when you don't even know there's a needle there. Most of those, actually all of those seven bodies are the ones that have come up and been viewed. None of them were located on the bottom of the river. That's not something that occurs. But how would you know that there's nothing to find if you're not searching? We know the likelihood of finding something. It's black water diving here. So for a hook to find something is so remote it's not even in the realm of a, a lottery win. We dive it as safe as we can, but there is the possibility of being entangled, having your umbilical cut. Um, it's inherently dangerous diving in, in black water. You can't see anything. To risk someone doing that on spec is just not something any of us are willing to do. Mm -hmm. So is there any point in searching at all? In our, in our estimation, no. Maybe that's why people are dumping bodies in there. If, if seven bodies have been found in the last year, you don't think it's worth searching at all? Most of those bodies are suicides uh, that have gone in by themselves. So um, people aren't readily dumping bodies in the river willy-nilly all the time. Um, so it, it, that's kind of a, a false statement. You don't think that there have been any murdered women dumped in the river? Obviously Tina Fontaine was, but to, to say anything beyond what's been discovered, I can't say that. Nobody can say that. In November 2014, less than three months after Tina Fontaine's body was found, another First Nations girl, 16-year-old Rennell Harper, was attacked and left for dead on the banks of the Assiniboine River, which meets the Red River in the center of Winnipeg. Construction workers found Harper at 7 a.m. on a Saturday morning after she had been attacked twice and thrown into the river the night before. She was taken to the ICU and survived. She is now an advocate for stopping violence against First Nations women. As a survivor, I respectfully challenge you all to call for a national inquiry into a missing and murdered Indigenous woman. With her family's permission, police took the unusual step of releasing her name and picture, hoping for tips. Within days, they charged a 20-year-old man and 17-year-old boy with attempted murder, sexual assault with a weapon, 
and aggravated sexual assault. I'm excited because I'm out here helping my brother. He calls me pretty much sometimes when he's on the boat and stuff, having like a break or something, telling me what he's found, um, where he's found it, and he's he takes a lot of pride in this. That's a scary part. Feel that? It's like yeah, making yeah. noise. Scrape it on something. Whoa! What's that? Snake. 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 Whoa! So then when you get a big snake like that, that we'll I jump felt. on board. <laughs> and we pull it up just to see what it was. What we got a plastic that? bag and we got panties. So if you find, you know, women's underwear, you think like maybe there's a woman down there? I believe there's many people down here. How many pairs of underwear have you pulled up? Too many, lots, lots. Why is there so much underwear in the river? I don't know. It's just, the only, it's just yeah, it's, your mind goes crazy, you know? Is, is, it a, is there a female down there, you know? So is the river behind us perhaps the perfect place to hide a body, for example? Yeah, I think, sadly, the river serves a great place to hide a body and that's a terrible thing to say but it's true it's it's easily accessible in lots of different places along the river and depending on like the stage of decomposition bodies will float for a while as the decomposition gases build up but then as they continue to decompose and they they disarticulate so like their limbs actually separate from the rest of the body they all sink to the bottom you said that you would identify it really quickly, whether it's bone or not, or whether it's of interest or not, if they send you a picture. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. So you'll, you'll get pictures from them on your cell phone, mm -hmm. and you'll just text them back right away. Yeah. So you're willing to do that. Um, you're volunteering your time, aren't you? Yes. Why are you doing that? Because it matters. Uh, because people matter. Because um, the missing matter, and the people that are doing this search, the ones that are uh, committing their time to look for their loved ones or the loved ones of a friend of theirs, they all matter. And even if, despite any training that they have and all the effort that they do, if they don't find anything, that might happen. But the point is that they're trying. And that is, we're, we're happy to help and uh, Bernadette has my information. Why do you personally dedicate your time to searching the river and along the banks for you for the ground search? Well, I have a sister who's missing since 2008, so it's close to home for me. People came to us in the community and said, you know, I had reported this to the police, they didn't look into it, it's not being investigated. So we had to get, you know, political will behind us to say, like, we need some help here. Could you, you know, come and make sure that the police are doing what they need to be doing in terms of investigation? Because it took them 10 days before they started investigating my sister's case. Do you think there's a difference between how police treat, for example, white residents and indigenous residents for when someone goes missing? Definitely. There was one case last summer where they actually went door to door, knocking on doors. Like, when my sister went missing, that wasn't the same response. You know, women are treated less than, and if you're indigenous, that's even more so because, you know, we're considered disposable, like no one's going to miss us or care about us when... In reality, you know, we all have families that care about us. Drag the Red has told us that as Indigenous people, they feel that police aren't uh, caring about them. What are you planning to do to address that issue? We do care about them. I meet with um, Bernadette all the time, Bernadette Smith. Um, uh, we've had several discussions. We, we support their initiative in the sense that uh, if they feel they're doing something uh, constructive to address what they see as an issue, then we support that. Um, to allocate resources to that when we, as the experts that know the river, know that it's remotely unlikely to find something like that. If they were to find something, a bone that was human, mm -hmm. would you then commit resources? Absolutely. That's what what would do. you do next? We would uh, find out where that bone came from. As a matter of fact, they turned in several bones last year that turned out not to be of human 
origin. But the question is, could you do more? And that's what I'm saying. I really don't think there is anything we can do more um, other than drain this river and walk it end to end and, and have a look. Uh, like I said, it doesn't matter how much money we have. There's really no other way to check it. So. Mm -hmm. so why don't police want you doing this? Have you asked them for help? Yeah. And what do they say? We won't do it. It's risk over reward. What does that mean? I don't know. I really don't know. Like you're doing it right now, they're risking their lives and, you know, and maybe there's not even a reward there maybe. But if they, if they knew there was somebody there, maybe then they would do it. Because then it's, it's more of a... So I don't know. Because they need evidence to be able to go after it, right? Well, yeah, they need evidence, but it's... it's to me, it's just common sense, you know? It's everybody, would, in my eyes, you want to get rid of something, you throw it in here. That's the way to get rid of something. Two days after we left Winnipeg, a man's body was found in the Red River. Two weeks after that, another man's body floated in and out of sight for eight days before it was pulled out. Police do not suspect foul play in either case. There are still 52 unsolved murders and disappearances of Aboriginal women and girls in Manitoba, and nearly 1,200 in Canada. A couple of days ago, you yes, smelled something? It kind of smells fishy, Yesterday eh? at uh, like St. John's Park. I don't know if you guys noticed that smell, but we all yeah. did. Same with the anthropologist. That's why we were there. We were walking out, walking around there. I was picking up the scent. And to you, that smelled like a body? It smelled the body coming across there somewhere. Yeah. Life jackets down both. And there's any chance that might not have been a body? 100% sure that's a body. 